Okay, this next one to read is called Kemal Manning. Because humans have a propensity toward idolatry. How does the link between Allah and the Dajjal mean that, sir? Because of human cognitive shortcomings. What? What does that link... Uh, how does that link show Allah like the Dajjal? Think, please. The Dajjal the, the doll will do so many miraculous things that people will want to take him as God, but despite all this, all his, quote, miracles, unquote, he is not God. And it is a last ditch, fail safe to remember that. So, what does that have to do with the confusion between Allah and the Dajjal being cleared up with Allah having two good eyes compared to the Dajjal, which will have compared to the, to the short, chubby, hen-toed guy having one eye. Because the Dajjal has, is a short, hen-toed, and Willie Harrington has one eye. But it looks like, like Allah. Yeah. God does not have one eye, which is the only difference between the Dajjal and Allah. Or why did Mo say, quote, If you are confused about him, the Dajjal, know that your Lord is not one-eyed. Something so obvious, but that's how swindled people will be. And apparently Muslims will be swindled as well into thinking this short, chubby guy with hen toes is Allah, minus the one good eye, though. Unless it's... Uh, unless they know this fact. Well, I will never be swindled because I read this hadith and know that if some little cyclops is trying to make me think he's Allah, I'll know that Allah is not a cyclops, not one eyed. I will know, though, that Allah is a little guy with a tendency to be chubby, hand toed, and not and not going bald. Oh, that mo! And I and Manning quit talking to me. Yeah, uh, Muhammad taught. <laughs> Muhammad said that uh, the Dajjal is going to be. Uh, he said, "Don't." He, he wanted to, he wanted the Muslims to not be confused of what the Dajjal is. He thought they might be thinking it might be Allah, and and he gives all these direction these descriptions of what the Dajjal is. But he says no, no, and, and then the Dajjal have one bad eye. And he goes, no, that your eye, your your Lord Allah is not one eyed. So in other words, Allah is a short hand toed <laughs> little guy. Okay, the atheist named Christian. Due to the complexity of human of the human body, I'm surprised that most of us turn out as well as we do. Seems we should all be diabetic monsters with cancer or something, yet uh, so many of us make it into our 70s. Okay. Uh, this is I'm I'm going to talk in my atheist voice here. I'll do my atheist voice pretty soon. All right. Okay, don't know why you thought to write that, derp, given the uh, complexity of air. I'm, I'm surprised uh, that we are not constantly swarmed non-stop by tornadoes. Uh, what is your point? Air is as complex as the human organism? Oh my, did I make a mistake? Thank you for correcting me. Uh, thank you for telling us uh, that organisms aren't very, very simple. Uh, before you said that, we... All uh, thought people were made from Play-Doh, and that's it. So, you see, your original statement wasn't obvious or uh, unnecessary. Also, thanks to you, I now know that it, was, it doesn't make sense that we don't all have cancer and diabetes from the first moment of our creation. You are very, very smart. Congratulations! Sounds... Sounds... Sounds like you lived up to your name. Yeah. If we... His name's Christian. Yeah. If we judge by name, then you must be a gay porn star. Ram Matt. Cute, Tinkerbell. <laughs> Man, I didn't know there was a gay porn star named... Uh, gay porn star with my name. Is there? I guess that proves my point. Thanks for looking it up, I guess. I sure wasn't going to do that uh, search on Google. <laughs> Didn't it bother you to sift through hundreds of pages of gay po Oh, you really are gay. 
I was half joking. Um, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Bye. <laughs> where did I say? Where did I say I looked it up? Talk about reading into things. No wonder you are so snooty in your atheism. You believe what you want to believe. You you believe what you want to believe. Um, I can see why you don't want to talk with me anymore. Okay, this next one I'm about to read is to you. It's called, uh, It Could Not Say Jesus is Lord. It Could Not Say Jesus is Lord. Um, in this comment section, I call it, uh, It Couldn't Say Jesus is Lord. Okay. So many of these NDEs mention no Jesus or hell. I wonder why these near-death experiences, they don't mention uh, Jesus or hell. And then the guy says, I, I've read that, I've read that uh, where you go in, I, 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 I've read that where you go is the astral realm and it's a world of thought. You think of being somewhere and instantly you go, you, you're there. I heard that you see what you, I, I heard that, I hear, I heard that you see what you believe in. Christians often see Jesus and Muslims see Muhammad. I can't vouch for this but it makes sense to me. The guy that said it is, named, is just named L. In other words, it's a very elaborate dream created by your mind. Makes sense. Yeah, well, uh, the other question uh, then uh, becomes what and where your mind is. It's been proven through remote viewing that your mind is not located in your physical brain as much as, pe as most people think it is. I've heard it said that the brain is what connects our physical bodies with our minds. Who knows? Not me. But it does make sense if one believes that we exist outside of the physical and survive death. You sound like you don't believe in near-death experiences. I have also heard from many physics and researchers physicists, I think he means, oh, many, many psychics, many psych psychics and researchers that uh, what we see as reality is, is really all an illusion. The Native Americans say we are living in a dream. Maybe we are. Maybe we really are in the matrix. Look up Dr. Gary Schwartz. He has been studying this topic for decades and he has worked to, with physics and pretty much has come to the conclusion that we do survive death. He he supposedly has even worked with these spirits and that they helped him with the device that makes it easier for them to communicate with each other. It's called the spirit of the spirit phone. I'm not into religions, but I do believe we live on after we die. We come from another level of existence and we go back there when we die. That makes sense to me. Otherwise, what would be the point or even being of of even being here? I've experienced some, some major coincidences that seem to point to uh, something more. Like, and then some guy named Holistic uh, Soul jumps in and says, exactly, there seems to be, some, there seems to be stra strange problems with these near-death experiences stories. How do we know these people aren't hallucinating their subconscious desires? How do we know they aren't lying? Why is there no hell? And it's always hun a hunky-dory story. And then I say this to him. I knew a guy who would put his students into trances and a spirit guide would enter them and let them know what they did in a past life. My dad tested the counselor, as it called itself, and by asking it if it could say, Jesus is Lord. It couldn't say it. Oh, it could say, he is Lord, and Jesus, if you asked who is the Lord, but it couldn't say the sentence, Jesus is Lord. And it became angry when questioned as to why. It said, the, the village warlock asked him, you really can't say Jesus is Lord? They went, no. Um, and then someone asked me what, what kind of coincidence is that experience? And I said, one of them involved a jacket of my grandfather. My granny put his name on the inside of it. It was her strange hobby to do that sort of thing. And my grandfather sent it to Goodwill in the town my grandparents lived in. Then one day, about 500 miles away from, the ten, from their town, about, uh, about 500 miles away from their town, 
A friend of the family shows up wearing my grandfather's jacket he picked up in the thrift store of the town my family was living in. He had no idea that the coat just so happened to be the coat of my grandfather. I mean, what are the odds? Another coincidence I experienced, I thought was so major that I've made a video about it, and here's the link. Yeah. <coughs> That's a great story. I, I was gonna click play I was going to click play on that video, but then I see you mentioned Matrix in it. Then I just had to leave. Sorry, uh, not my cup of tea. Okay, I take it you're not a Calvinist. Duh. How do you explain such coincidence if you're not if 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 you're not someone who believes God calling the shots with your existence? I do believe in God, and God pulled off such coincidences to you. Oh, and what do you mean? Coincidence such as, if one is an atheist, a big coincidence is due to certain actions of Adam swirled about and given a lot of time and chance, something will coincide to produce life. If you believe in God, you believe such an event can only coincide if God were behind it. Thus, if you're an atheist, the events I reported are just as long the line of Adam swirling about in ancient tide pools. It depends on how you view them. If God was not behind what I experienced, I feel, it opens the door up, up uh, more to atoms being swirled about in ancient tide pools to produce life that way. I just read the story you said about the, spirits, the spirit guide thing, and that's so creepy. And that's so creepy. I heard it on an audio tape and it had a profound effect on my life. It had a profound effect on my belief system. Later, I tried to contact that village warlock and he cussed me out, furious that my dad would apparently secretly tape his meeting with him. I then called him back. I then called him down. I, I then calmed him down by letting him know that my dad later accidentally taped over such an event when he confused the tape with another, gaining a bunch of boring gospel music and commercials on it. It was like discovering that, that, it was like discovering that the one taping of walking in, onto an alien spacecraft was taped over with an Oprah, with an Oprah uh, show. Dad then looked down on me a bit for, have, for having something from the occult increase my faith in Christianity rather than the Bible and was I was uh, gl glad he screwed up. Well, occult or not, I became more on fire in my Christian walk. By the way, the girl the counselor was speaking through is my Facebook friend. I keep on wanting to ask her about that night when my dad interviewed her, or it, but I can't seem to uh, get up the nerve. She's, she's really not my friend, just a Facebook friend. To this day, she still believes in reincarnation, unfortunately, and here's the video that I talk about that time. Okay, this next thing is called Jen La Lin. Jen La Lin. Jen La Lin here. All right. Okay. If there is a ceasefire, the Muslims must not have been doing well in the fight. In Islam, a Muslim is never to surrender when he is uppermost in war, and only when he is outnumbered. Oh, really? And I'm sure you can quote the Quran and by Surah and verse to that point? Yes, pretty much. Want me to post uh, the one about not surrendering when Muslims are uppermost in battle with infidels? Hmm. I love it when non-Muslims blankets all Muslims with off-the-wall statements like that. I don't. I don't. I don't. The Quran does if they are to follow the Quran. 
using quote global labeling terms like never and only to make your knowledge sound so absolute. Seriously? Sounds like you don't agree with the Quran. I was practicing. I was practically quoting a scripture from the quote, Clear Signs Quran. You've managed to take a bit of goodness, and I consider a ceasefire greatness in 99.9% .9 of circumstances, and put a downward spin on it. Easy to do when we are talking about belief. When we, easy to do when we are talking about uh, belief who are... Uh, believers who are forced to believe in such an alienating book as the Quran. How depressing. I'm just the messenger here. It's sort of like, oh, quote, oh, there's something positive going on in the Middle East. I must make a wise crack against Muslims just to be sure everyone walks away from this article with a continued disdain toward them because all, after all, again, <coughs> Again, a Muslim is not to talk of peace when he is uppermost in war, only when he is getting his patootie kicked. Okay, that last part was mine. We sure don't want to consider that they too are human beings and must want... Oh shoot, I've got... Oh crap, it's too, too far. i got to stop here. Bye.